Hey YouTube, what is going on? Thanks for checking out the Straight SRT8 YouTube channel where we discuss all things SRT8 related. Now before I get into today's video, I want to say thank you to all my subscribers. You guys are awesome. I do these videos for you guys. And we are at almost 200 subscribers, which is phenomenal. Uh, my goal is to get to a thousand as soon as I can. That way we can start making some money on this channel and get you guys better videos out there. Uh, more money means better parts, means more videos, means better content. It just keeps going and going and going, um, which is why I do these videos for my subscribers. So thank you guys. For those of you who are just watching a quick video here or there, consider subscribing as well. I have a ton of good content on the way and more to come soon. So now let's get to it. Let's discuss horsepower versus torque. Uh, so if you go on YouTube, you go on the internet, and you search horsepower versus torque, there are tons of scientific explanations, tons of guys doing their best to subscribe or to um, describe, sorry, torque versus horsepower uh, or torque versus power. So I don't want to get into the science of it. I just wanted to explain what it means to us car guys. So what is better, what's torque or, or horsepower? Um, what about peak horsepower and peak torque? Um, is that all that matters? Or do the actual torque and horsepower curves on like a dyno chart actually matter? What about um, if you want to win a, a quick race from 0 to 60? You know, from a dig to 100? Uh, a quarter mile, a half mile? What's more important, horsepower or torque? What about top speed? What if you're trying to hit uh, 200, 300 miles an hour? What's more important, horsepower or torque? And how do they actually relate to one another? Um, so again, I don't want to get into the crazy mathematical formulas. I want to try and describe it the way it makes sense to me. Um, you know, there are a lot of great videos out there, but they don't all do it justice to a car person's standpoint of view. Um, so I want to make sure that I explain it the best way I understand. I hope you guys know what I'm talking about too, but we can truly understand horsepower versus torque. Um, so what is horsepower and torque? So if you're driving a car, uh, and now my goal here isn't to get sidetracked, but hopefully I can kind of keep on point. If you're driving a vehicle and you want to have that grunt, you want to have that instant throttle response, you want to have that burnout action, you want to just have that immediate pull, that immediate burst of energy, that's torque. Um, if you want to pull through your gears as fast as possible, say you're at 2,000 RPMs, and you want to get to 8,000 RPMs as soon as possible, that's horsepower. Um, that's the major difference. Horsepower pulls you through the gears and gets you going, or and keeps you going, and torque gets you going. That breaks that initial inertia. Um, so Hemi engines, in particular, are phenomenal for low-end torque. Uh, they're a little bit outdated in terms of modern technology because they're not dual overhead cams, which most engines are. Um, they're just a single cam of the Hemi engine. But where they shine is their low-end torque. And that's why SRTs, SRT8s, um, have that Hemi engine because they're low-end torque. That's why you get that awesome 0-60 launch. So, what's more important? Well, if your goal is to bring the car from 0 to 60 as fast as possible, 0 to 100 as fast as possible, you're going to want a lot of low-end torque. And you're going to want consistent and constant low-end torque. And I'll get to that in a minute. If your goal is to go as fast as possible, you're going to want horsepower. Horsepower is going to pull you through those gears. Uh, now, why do cars measure their like their resale, uh, their manufacturing advertisements? Um, OEMs all refer to horsepower. Um, Craigslist ads refer to horsepower. So why does everyone care so much about horsepower? Um, because horsepower sells cars. And a very famous quote or reference is that um, torque wins races and horsepower sells cars. Um, now that's a true statement, uh, depending on if you're trying to do a, a quick 0 to 60 pull or quarter mile, you're gonna want that high end torque. Now we get into like NA, which is natural aspiration. You get into turbos, you get into superchargers, and they all provide torque at different ranges. Um, so a turbocharger, if I get too much into it, uses exhaust, ex sorry, exhaust gases to spool up the turbine. So as you go faster in RPMs, you get more uh, PSI for pressure. It means you get more air, it means you get more gas. So it's kind of got this linear almost relationship to RPM. So your initial low end torque is not going to be there. It is going to provide more power as your RPMs get higher. So out of the dig, it's gonna hurt. Um, there are ways around that, like brake launching and all that good stuff. But superchargers, on the other hand, provide that instant snap action torque. Um, the Jeep SRTs come with, uh, the Trackhawk version comes with a supercharger for that reason. It does take power out of the engine in order to make power, but you do get instantaneous power for a supercharger. 
Uh, now, NAs obviously also have natural horsepower. And that's why there's that famous saying that there's no replacement for displacement. Uh, that means that you, you can try and do whatever you want to an engine, but your answer is always displacement. Uh, of course, that's not necessarily true, depending on what your viewpoint is, but I'm getting sidetracked here. Um, so, horsepower and torque for a Jeep SRT. So, if your goal is to go as fast as possible out of a dig, you want that horse or you want that uh, torque. And then to pull you through those gears, you want high end horsepower. So, I'm going to do a video um, showing you in our SRTs how we compare horsepower and torque and how we can actually monitor it through your performance app in the uh, SRT uh, dash. And then we're actually going to show cruising horsepower and speed and torque. And we're going to show RPMs um, for all those ranges and for launching the vehicle for aggressive driving and so on and so forth. We actually see in real time what it actually does for horsepower and torque relationships in the SRTs. Let's get to it. All right, so I got you guys as close as possible to the screen. There's probably going to be a glare, but best I can do. All right, so right now we are idling. Um, so you see zero horsepower, zero torque. And just doing no work right now. Now, give it a second. Give it a little bit of gas. You see how the torque jumps pretty high. You know, we're almost at 100 foot pounds of torque uh, and almost no RPMs. And the horsepower is very low. Again, I'm not trying to pull through any gears right now. I'm just trying to get the car going, which explains what I mentioned before. You get that snap action power from torque and you pull through the gears with horsepower. All right, so here we are, a very light acceleration. You see that our torque jumps to 146 foot pounds of torque, or pound feet of torque. Horsepower, not too much. You know, the torque's way higher than horsepower right now. Again, very light acceleration, for about 40 miles an hour. Now that's because these Hemis have a lot of low end torque. That torque gets you going, the horsepower again pulls you through the gears. Now if I give it more gas, you see that the torque again climbs sky high and the horsepower jumps moderately, but not crazy, and not as high as the torque does. That's because again, we give it a lot of torque to get you going, and then the horsepower is again pulling you through those gears. Um, so again, the Hemis, lots and lots of low end torque, which is awesome for Hemis, awesome getting out of a dig. That's why these are phenomenal cars for doing a 0 to 60. And then right now we are at uh, zero RPMs. Well, not zero, but um, I have the fuel cut off. I might put up the accelerator. And so you saw back there, we have zero horsepower, zero torque, because again, we cut off all fuel to the engine. It's making literally no power when we are using the engine to brake. I want to put it in sport mode and show you the difference between auto and sport mode. So right now we're in auto. Now I just changed to sport mode. You see how that torque instantly got a lot higher? And the car is tuning itself and it already gave you that instant power which sport mode demands. Um, so very big difference between auto mode and sport mode when driving your vehicle. You can feel the extra power and again it shows you right now we're under almost no acceleration and your torque's a lot lot higher. You can already feel the car getting ready to go. So it's staying uh, closer to that power band range in order to maximize your horsepower and torque output. Back in auto mode right now and there you go i didn't change anything in um, throttle wise the same amount of throttle and you saw your torque instantly drop back down to auto mode or went in auto mode and again explains why there are auto modes and there's sport mode and there's track mode definitely makes a big difference not only by the pants or the seat of the the feel of the seat excuse me uh, but also by the numbers provided through this transducer all right so next thing i want to do is give us some acceleration We'll do like a, a medium acceleration and then we'll do wide open throttle in both uh, auto and sport. For this video, I wanted to show the horsepower and torque relationship um, between auto and track mode or auto and sport mode under light, medium, and heavy wide open throttle applications. All right, we're gonna do light acceleration in auto mode. It's like typical driving on the street acceleration. See right there, torque's way higher than horsepower. This is just auto mode. And now I'm gonna do it again in track mode. Uh, I decided not to use sport mode. I figured that if we're gonna do a comparison, let's do the most aggressive comparison we can. So here we go, going on to zero, and track mode, light acceleration. So you can tell right away, the car's trying to pull harder, even though I'm trying to have it kind of tamed back. 
choice right there, the comparison just between the auto and track one. I mean, track one just wants to go. All right, now we're gonna put it back in auto. I'm going to do a medium acceleration. It's kind of like if you're going on the on-ramp trying to get on the throughway. So let's do that real quick. Okay, it's auto mode. there our torque is twice what our horsepower is you know you're trying to get going you're trying to get moving um, but you're not trying to race and so the car's you know main goal is to up as much torque as possible try and get you that instant power as you're going through the gears and then the horsepower is there that's not phenomenal all right now we're going to do track mode medium acceleration again kind of going on the on ramp Right there, I mean, the car is way more jerky. It's kind of slammed through those gears as fast as possible. Uh, but your torque, again, still pretty impressive. It's way out, out powering your horsepower. Now let's do a wide open throttle in track mode. I'm not going to launch it. I'm just going to do a wide open throttle. Let's see what it does. So right there, your horsepower matches your torque. And you can see when, as soon as the car shifts gears, your torque drops off um, because it's you can't maximize torque at that high of an RPM. Um, so as you get closer to right align, your torque's gonna drop off because your maximum torque isn't by right align. Horsepower is though. I mean, your horsepower tends to go higher with right align or with um, RPMs. So in track mode, you definitely have a lot higher horsepower pulling through those gears as hard as possible. And your torque gives you that instant stiff action power at the beginning of every shift change in the gears. Um, so it really helps you to maximize your 0 to 60 time there. I'm going to do this again in auto mode. You guys good comparison uh, between the two. Now it should be very similar in auto mode. Uh, we're about to put it to the test and make sure I know what I'm talking about. Alright, so let's do auto mode, wide open throttle. No launcher. saw there again horsepower and torque obviously they're maxed out we're at wide open throttle um, you can definitely hear a difference in track versus auto mode the auto kind of more gradual gear changing definitely impacts your 0 to 60 times not slipping through the gears um, versus track mode extremely aggressive tire suspension less body roll less movement so on and so forth um, again justifying track mode versus auto mode but for horsepower and torque comparisons there was definitely a difference there between auto mode and track mode all right, so earlier in the video, I did mention um, peak power curves. Um, so in a dyno chart, uh, when you're doing posts, uh, if you see videos online of guys using a, a dyno to rate their horsepower and torque outputs, uh, they have front-wheel drive ones, rear-wheel drive, um, they have all-wheel drive ones. Regardless, they're measuring horsepower and torque. Um, they do that through one single gear, though. Um, so our engine has a transmission for a reason. It is designed to maximize your power and keep you in that power band. Uh, so in that power band, you're going to pull as hard and fast as possible, maximizes torque, maximizes horsepower. During dyno charts though, they keep you usually in third gear. And they do a, a pull from zero to your red, red line, and they show that curve. Um, so typically your, your torque is a little bit lower and it kind of maximizes in the middle of your RPM range, it kind of drops off a little bit. Uh, horsepower tends to kind of build all the way through and then the very end tapers off. Um, now I would, in a perfect engine, keep pulling all the way through your red line, uh, but the very end of your red line, usually you have limiting factors like uh, your intake manifold isn't large enough, or that uh, your airflow isn't high enough, or some other factor that's limited um, because you're not getting the maximum amount of air through the engine. Um, so those kinds of things, like changing out your intake manifolds, changing the port and everything, throttle bodies, I mean, so on and so forth. Maximizing airflow is going to get you a higher horsepower at the very high end. Um, usually only like drift racers care about that because they're constantly bouncing off red line. Anyway, your torque and horsepower curves are extremely important because when you look at the like, OEMs comparing like Mustangs uh, to SRTs, when you're looking at Mustang charts and even SRT charts, they only advertise your peak horsepower and your peak torque. They don't advertise your average. 
Um, so your actual average, the area under the curve, going back to math class, uh, the area under your curve is your total output. And the higher that number is, the higher your total torque is going to be, the higher your total horsepower is going to be um, through your whole range, which means you're going to pull harder. And that is exactly why EVs, you know, electronic vehicles, are winning the race for zero to 60s. That's why you see all these videos on, of Teslas um, going against these modded out cars that have crazy horsepower and the Teslas are winning. Because electronic motors have maximum torque from zero RPM to their highest RPM, to their, their red line equivalent. And gas engines don't. That's the simple reason why they win, they win their uh, drag races. So by having that instant torque available, um, they're allowed to, again, get that snap action power where they rocket off the line like, instantaneously. I mean, the Tesla Roadster, 0 to 60 in 1.9 seconds. It does use thrusters, which kind of defeats the purpose um, of preparing EVs to gas. But regardless, uh, a lot of electric cars are going to have that snap action power because they had the instantaneous torque. Where they lose, however, is the horsepower. They don't have the horsepower. Um, so they will win a, a quick eighth mile drag race. Uh, drag race. Uh, you get into a quarter mile, you get into a half mile, there's no way they win. Uh, because they don't have the horsepower that gas engines have. Um, but for that quick, again, zero to 60 pull, EVs are gonna win because they had that low end torque. Comparing other brands, like again, like Camaros and Mustangs. Look at the actual power curve. Um, look at your power band. When did your torque kick in? You want low end torque for those good races, which is why SRTs are phenomenal for going out of the dig, especially all wheel drive ones, and they have a lot of low end torque. And then the higher RP or the higher uh, horsepower again pulls you through those gears. So if you go to buy your next car, keep in mind that horsepower and torque power band curve when you're buying your vehicle. If your goal is to have a crazy fast street car, then pay very close attention to those curves. Now again, stock cars can obviously be manipulated as these ones are too. Uh, you can do things to affect where your torque and horsepower maximizes. You can do different tunes and so on and so forth. But comparing base to base, check out those power bands. So guys, that is it for this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the discussion of horsepower versus torque. I hope that my rendition of it gave you guys a better feel for how it actually applies to cars. And I hope it wasn't too scientific or too technical, too engineering wise. It's more of an easy breakdown of torque versus horsepower, why it matters, um, how it compare, compares to light throttle, medium throttle, and heavy throttle applications, and why it matters for our SRTs. This is just one video of many. I have a lot more content on the way. So go ahead and subscribe to this channel. I'll click that button that's there right now. If you got other questions, go ahead and drop them below in this video. I love responding to comments, and I hope to see you guys soon. Thanks. All right, guys, so I told you I was done recording that video, but I figured why not have some wide open throttle? I'm on my favorite road. Let's do it. Good way to end the video, right? There we go. There's a car coming, but whatever. And let's launch it.